the time I realized the true power of this methodology of using the sound meaning um, components was when early on in my time in China, I was trying to order Ganbian Si Ji Dou from a menu, menu, even though I only knew, I believe at the time, two out of the five characters. Um, I didn't know the character for Bian, and I didn't know Ji, and I didn't know Dou. Um, so I only knew two characters, um, Gan and Si. Despite this, I was able to guess at the pronunciation. Um, I knew the right hand component of Bian was Bian. Um, I knew that the bottom component of Ji was Zi, and we've seen Zi in, um, in Hao. And I also knew that the middle component of Dou was Kou, uh, mouth. And this was close enough for me to order, uh, so I guess I would have ordered Gan Bian Si Zi Kou, which is totally wrong and it sounds awful now, but it was close enough in terms of pronunciation for me to be understood and for the, the waitress to then bring me that dish without me having to resort to pointing at a menu and saying Jaga. It allowed me to communicate. When we start to communicate, we're already 80% of the way there. Finessing from this point is much easier than finessing from complete ignorance. And I was able to ask the waitress after, when, when the food arrived, I said, how do you say this, pointing at the food? And she gave me the correct pronunciation. Without my knowledge of the sound meaning components, so I would have never been able to communicate what I wanted and order the food. Um, so for me, this was a real uh, revelation about the importance of the sound meaning components and how we can use this to start communicating in Chinese a lot quicker than if we first have to learn the meaning and pronunciation of thousands and thousands of characters. There are shortcuts and this is one of the best ones. So I, I want you to start implementing it into your study as quickly as possible.